Good morning, everyone, and welcome out for a early edition of our Progress from the Patch Summer, 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 Summer Sunday updates. Um, this is, gosh, we're cruising through June here, so second, third week of June, whatever it is. Um, wanted to kind of uh, fill you in as usual with what's going on out here. As you can see, I'm I'm talking to you while uh, Caleb and Christy are working hard getting Miss uh, Stella May milked. And uh, you can watch that in the background and listen to me babble, I guess, here to start this thing off. So it has been going well, well milking Stella May. Um, this week, it's been rough. Um, probably rough, uh, roughest for me personally, I think, just uh, uh, dealing with uh, what's getting thrown at us. So we made it through the heat at the beginning of the week um, pretty well. And we were, I was, I think everybody was looking forward to the rain that was supposed to come on, when was that, Friday morning, I think. Um, you know, if if you're not a farmer, I don't think you can fully appreciate what it means to look forward to a rain and get a rain before a uh, long dry spell in the summer. Because this time of year, we're always just looking for that security and, um, um, you know, trying to uh, <laughs> to get through and, and make a crop when, when the forecast looks hot and dry. So anyway, that rain was supposed to come Friday. Um, it didn't really make it here. We did get a little bit of rain, but what we got, as most of you know, is a lot of wind, and the wind did quite a bit of damage. Um, not as much damage as it could have done, but it did tear things up quite a bit. And um, I don't know, that's been, I guess I'll get a little personal here, that's been kind of hard for me to deal with. I'm a, I'm a worrier. I uh, kind of struggle with anxiety quite a bit, and uh, if, you know, a lot of, a lot of farmers, a lot of people can just say, hey, that's farming, that's the way it goes, and it is, that's true, and I don't quite understand how they deal with things so well when I'm, you know, I'm here kind of struggling through with some of the, uh, um, just the, the mental stuff that goes along with, with what we do here when things don't work out the way we'd hoped. So, um, like I said, I'll, I'll show you here in this video kind of some, some of the damage we had. It could have been a lot worse, um, but you know, I think what makes it even harder is when I when I get online or on the internet and I see a lot of the um, uh, just things out there, uh, ju judgments going toward farmers, let's put it that way, whether it was the cows that died in Kansas or you know, glyphosate use or anything, go down the list and everybody's dialing out this judgment toward what we're doing and they've never done it themselves. Um, so try, I guess, <laughs> a plea to try to um, try to understand why we make the decisions we do out here and try to understand what we go through and how um, it's not as easy as it looks on the surface sometimes, um, and don't, don't be so quick to judge um, until you've done it. Um, and I'm not, you know, talking to you, you personally. I'm saying the public in general because a lot of times it feels like, um, you know, we're we're just getting attacked on a lot of fronts out here, and um, if we're not careful, a lot of the uh, things being imposed on us will have long-lasting repercussions. You know, kind of like I think a lot about the um, coal-fired power plants that get shut down, and now. Uh, now we're dealing with, uh, oh, that's nice, Stella. <laughs> they got shut down and um, now we're dealing with, you know, brownouts and, and not enough power. Same thing could happen here with farming. If, um, you know, a lot of things coming at us that aren't, you know, environmental, that are, that are political, um, coming at us might shut us down. And uh, boy, if that happens, it's not gonna be power that's short, it's food. So anyway, I'll get off my, uh, my tangent there. I'll get to show and you kind of, uh, how things are looking out here, and we'll leave Christy and Caleb to their work. So, uh, see you, see you out in the field here in a minute. All right, thanks for following me out here. I am um, standing in our popcorn. So this is the red, white, and blue and Trinity popcorn that we sell in the fall. And if you remember from previous videos, this is about the same spot I was standing uh, when I we took those when this was just kind of bare, uh, you know, bare soil. It looked like the corn was just coming up. Uh, had a hard time getting this corn out of the ground. With the weather conditions we had but we finally got it up and and uh, boy this stuff was uh was looking great and still is looking pretty good but uh what i wanted to show you while we're out here is what uh what all that wind did to us so um i'm pretty sure we've well, i know we've got a picture nathan will probably put up right about now uh that shows uh right after the storm so the corn was laid over by the wind laid over pretty flat and it's um it's not unusual for corn to get blown over by the wind like that and uh, as you can see most of it has stood back up most of the times it stays uh, stays connected at uh, at the base and it'll grow and stand back up what was kind of unusual about this windstorm is it was so um, intense that a lot of the corn just snapped off instead of um, 
just laying over. So it broke off and then it's, it's game over. I think a lot of it had to do with the intensity of the wind and a lot of it had to do that the corn was heat stressed beforehand. So here's a really good example of what I'm talking about with, uh, with that wind and the corn's response to it. So these couple stalks uh, right in here, these first three, you can see they've got a little curve to them. We call that a little bit of a gooseneck. That's pretty typical for what we'd expect to see. You know, they got they got blown crooked and the uh, the plant will uh, reach back up to the light. So they're, they're on their way to recovery. As we come down the row here, you know, this one got blown a little more. It's still still going to be okay these guys were leaned even more and then boom right here we have one that um that got broke off or partially broke off and actually if you look down there by the roots you'll see that damp soil that is where the roots are actually pushing moisture up for the plant and the plant can't get it because it's because it's busted off and um you know you see the plant there it's it's dying it's dead and honestly these guys here typically I'd expect them to be just fine, but the fact that we didn't hardly get any rain uh, with the with the wind, and now we're heading into a week of 95, 100 degree weather, you can actually see, I don't know if you can see the, the eh, it's hard to see on there, but these leaves are starting to discolor. Um, this plant is probably on its way to dying too because it needs its full root system to really suck moisture from deep in the profile to survive this heat. So um, this is this is pretty typical about what we have out here, you know, and if we figure out here, we've probably lost a quarter of um, the plants, you know, that's that's at least a quarter of the yield. And actually this corn looks, looks pretty good. Um, it was at a, a stage, there's a bunch more blown over, a stage where it, uh, it took the wind a little better than say our field corn. Our field corn, and we've got a couple pictures of that, I'm sure Nathan will put up. Our field corn, really a lot of it snapped off and it's pretty, I'm gonna say close to catastrophic out there, which is really a shame because um, as you know, corn is, uh, it cost us a lot to put that crop in. We had a hard time sourcing all of the inputs, uh, finally dealt with the weather and that corn's you know, worth quite a bit and we're counting on it and it's just simply, not going to be there because of the wind and that's not even to say and you know if we don't get any rain here in the next couple weeks that's just going to compound the issue so just something we got to deal with you know um as, as farmers keep telling me that's farming but boy it's hard to watch but anyway i'm grateful that this corn we will you know granted we get some rain before the end of the summer we will get a popcorn crop off of this it just won't be near as good as um we had we had planned for all right, so I'm out here in our apple orchard that will be uh, hopefully opening for you pick this fall for you all to come in here and check out. Um, the wind wasn't very kind to it either. Could have been a lot worse again. But um, anytime we get a wind event like that and the leaves really get shaken around and there's, there's damage to the leaves and stuff, I always come through and spray a fungicide application to uh, protect those open wounds from getting infected. I think I've used the... Uh, uh, comparison before of you know like when we get a cut we uh, put neosporin on so i was coming through here uh spraying uh with with the fungicide you know there's there's apples knocked off on the ground and we knew that uh you know going into it that the wind had not only rustled up the leaves it had shaken off a fair amount of apples but as i'm going along all of a sudden i start noticing uh this that's happening right there and uh, tree wilting, what in the world? So let me turn the camera around and we'll show you what happened. All right, so here's what I started noticing. We've got, you know, a healthy tree. We've got a tree that's wilting, dying. We've got a healthy tree. And upon closer inspection, what happened is right there, pretty terminal. Um, you can see this is the root stock. This would have been the graft union. Let me see if I can pick him up. That's what it's supposed to look like. This is where they, uh, when they grafted, they connected the uh, the rootstock to the scion, to the main tree. And I guess with the wind whipping around, um, it just totally broke that. And so, yeah, that's <laughs> that's terminal. Um, as you can see, trees dying. It was only, thankfully, about 10 or 12 trees out of the whole orchard. But still, this is a, this is a four-year-old apple tree. It was just going to come into production. We invested a lot in this, and now it's, it's done for. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out kind of what went wrong? It seems like most of them that broke off were kind of halfway in between uh, two posts. So you see a post there, and there's a post down there behind that tree. You can't see it. So I don't know if my wires were a little loose and they got to flapping and that middle tree just couldn't handle it. So we may tighten the wires, but you know, also 
Um, there's when the tree gets big apples loaded on it and if we get any wind like that and it starts shaking around um, we could see this happen some more so that was kind of a an issue I wasn't planning on dealing with so we'll have to tear this tree and the other ones that broke out of here and, and plant new ones next spring but like I said that's only about 12 trees 10 or 12 trees out of the 700 so there again could have been much worse but still hate to see it all right, you ready for some good news? Um, I'm out here in the pumpkin patch now, and the pumpkins, thankfully, survived the wind okay. You see right over there, we've got a, uh, that's actually one of our giant pumpkins. We've got, oh gosh, about, I think, two or three acres of giant pumpkins out here, and they, um, they survived the wind. Now, interestingly, and here again, I don't know if you can see it very well in the picture, but if you notice a lot of the uh, dead weeds and corn stalks as you're walking out here all of them are pointing to the what is that southeast because that wind came out of the northwest and actually was strong enough that it blew the um the corn stalks and the dead weeds across the ground um all and now they're all laying in one direction i've actually got a spot up at the buildings where we had about a foot of, uh, of uh, bark mulch or, or wood chips around some plants it blew the mulch completely away and it scattered for for the next, uh, gosh, probably quarter mile, I've been finding mulch. So it was some crazy wind. But we are very grateful that the pumpkins were at this stage. Had they been about two weeks older, they get to a point, it's called tip over stage, where they get real, real big and stand up, kind of like a, a vase almost, or like a head of romaine lettuce. It's right before they start to vine. And when they're standing up there like that, they're really susceptible to wind because they got all that weight of leaf up there and uh you know the wind can actually snap them right off and if if they would have been at that stage when we got this wind event i'm pretty sure it would have uh it would have probably wiped out the patch and been too late to replant so grateful for that that uh, these guys are are making it they are yeah uh, they're going to be getting thirsty here pretty soon all the pumpkins do pretty well when it's dry but um we are hoping they get a drink at some point but anyway yeah the pumpkins they are coming along want to make a quick stop out here in the canaf so you guys could see that i don't know if you uh, saw my post a while back this uh this is another one of the weird and unusual crops we're growing this stuff we're going to use for a little bit of a uh, pathway wander area i don't like to call it a maze but a uh, kind of a, a place for kids to explore like that uh, this this stuff will get um here's a plant right there it looks a little bit like cotton it's supposed to get 15 or 20 feet tall and it actually starts to flower in september with a little hibiscus like flower so this is going to look like a huge uh kind of uh, like bamboo forest almost i think so really excited to, to kind of follow this and see how it turns out and i hope you will be too to come out and, uh, and check it out this fall all right, by now, I hope there's some of you on the other side of the screen just wondering or even screaming, what about the mums? If the wind was strong enough to blow the corn stalks and the weeds over and the apples and the corn, what about all 5,000 of those uh, mum pots? Are they scattered all over God's creation now? And honestly, that was my biggest fear coming out Friday morning after the storm was, oh my goodness, um, if those pots are blown away, it's, it's, uh, it's a bad deal. But thankfully, I am proud... <laughs> to say and thankful that they are not scattered all over. Um, God is good always, and in this case, we get to see it in the fact that these mum pots stayed put, and the mums themselves are growing uh, very well. We did, oh, let me back up. We did lose, let me get it on here. We lost one pot right there. You see a pile of soil. These are some pots we didn't plant anything in yet because the mums are coming later. We lost that one pot. We still haven't found it. It could be other side of Greenfield for all we know, but why that one pot blew away and the rest of them didn't, I think um, maybe adds just a little humor to this whole ordeal. So um, anyway, the mums, let me, let me uh, again turn the camera around and we'll show you them a little closer. All right, so these guys, we've uh, made it through about the, oh, one of the hardest, uh, I don't want to say one of the hardest weeks of growing them, but a difficult week of, gro week of growing them because uh, with all the heat and these were planted as little plugs, they didn't have many roots. So we got to be real careful to keep them watered so they grow roots, but also not too wet to where the roots will rot. So I, Christy has done an awesome job. She's been out here twice a day, sometimes three times a day, always coming out in the heat of the afternoon to check these things and adjusting the um, irrigation accordingly. Uh, and it's something we will will have to keep up. Um, we'll keep up all summer. We actually we're we're not going on a vacation this summer because we can't leave these silly mums. We they're they're about like having more children or maybe even worse. But uh, 
yeah, so we're committed to growing these things out. Um, we're so thankful that they are, they didn't get blown away, um, but we're committed to growing them out and having them beautiful for you this fall. I hope, um, hope you'll be able to come out and, and, um, you know, buy a few and, and take the beauty home with you and appreciate all that goes into, um, you know, having that beauty for the fall. So there again, we are very grateful. These mums are looking pretty well. All right, so that pretty well wraps up this uh, this update for the week. Thank you guys for following along. Thank you for uh, being a part of this with us. And thank you for allowing me to uh, vent a little bit, I guess, and kind of share some of my struggles in this with you because that does help me. And as I say that, I want to I wanna wish everybody a happy Father's Day today. Um, thank you to the my father, my dad, and all the father figures in my life. Um, for all the good priests we've known along the way and know now and just uh, for their guidance and leadership. And I also, you know, as we kind of struggle through some of the the um, trials of doing this, I, I really become aware of how, you know, the struggles so many dads go through on so many levels and how we all deal with it differently. And just uh, remember that and be, be praying for all of us because it is our calling to to lead our families, to lead um, through all this and, and lead our families to heaven through Jesus, of course. And um, yeah, it's a big job and uh, gosh, um, we all need to be in together to step up to that. So yes, happy Father's Day. Um, also want to ask um, ask for your prayers this time before I leave you with a prayer. Uh, prayers for peace and trust and what God's plan is. Also prayers for rain. Um, there's not much of a chance of rain in the forecast for the next week, hopefully. Maybe next time I talk with you, we'll have got some rain, but it's not looking probable. So pray for rain. Um, if we don't get any by the next update, it's going to be getting pretty, pretty, um, you know, dire out here. So um, I'd ask you all to pray for that, that we get the rain we think we need, but also to be ready to accept whatever God's plan is, because he knows best. Um, with that, uh, today is the Feast of Corpus Christi, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And um, I want to leave you with a really short prayer that I've been trying to pray a lot this week. It comes um, through Jesus giving to a special lady called St. Faustina in the Divine Mercy Chapel. It's part of a uh, bigger group of prayers we pray as Catholics called the Divine Mercy Chaplet. But it's simply, Jesus, I trust in you. And, you know, I've been saying that over and over this week. And um, it's, I wish I could believe it as easy as I say it. It's a, it's a struggle. But as I'm out here on a beautiful, uh, beautiful morning and the mum pots are sitting still or sitting put and family's healthy and we have food on the table so much to be thankful for um and yes jesus i trust in you so i hope you will too and i hope you will keep following along and um, come see us and support us this fall have a great day everybody